Hello, my name is Angèle, and I pray that you're all filled with the Holy Spirit, with every blessing and grace. I would like to continue on the book Philotea, An Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales, and we are at part two, and I'm moving forward to chapter 12, and the title is Spiritual Retreat. And he says, On this subject, Philotea, I would require your most earnest attention to my counsels, for it involves one of the most important means towards your spiritual advancement. As often as you can through the day, recall your mind to the presence of God by one of the four methods I have mentioned. Consider what He is doing and what you are doing, you will always find his eyes fixed upon you with unchangeable love. Then say, O oh my God, why cannot I be ever looking up to you, even as you are ever looking down upon me? Why do you ever remember me while I, alas, so often forget you? O oh my soul, your true rest is in God. Are you seeking it there only? Just as the birds have their nests to which they can retreat, and the stag shelters himself in the thick forest, seeking shade and refreshment when the summer is hot, even so, Philotea, should our hearts daily seek a resting place on Mount Calvary or in the wounds of our blessed Lord or in some other spot close to him, whether to retire on all occasions, there to rest from their worldly cares and to find protection and strength against temptation. Happy the soul, which can sincerely say to the Lord, you are my house of defense, my strong tower, my shelter against the storm and my refuge against the heat. Remember then frequently to retire into the solitude of your heart, even while you are externally occupied in busyness or society. This mental solitude need not be hindered, although many persons are around you, for they do but surround your body, not your heart, which should remain alone in the presence of God. This is what King David did throughout his numberless cares, and we find him in the Psalms perpetually explaining, My God, you are ever before me. The Lord is ever on my right hand. To you, O Lord, have I lifted up my eyes. O you that dwell in the heavens, my eyes are ever looking to the Lord. We are rarely so engaged in intercourse with others as to be unable from time to time to recall our hearts into this blessed solitude. When St. Catherine of Siena was deprived by her parents of all suitable time and place where she could pray and meditate, our Lord inspired her with the thought of making an oratory in her heart, where she could retire mentally and amidst external distractions enjoy internal solitude. And later, when the world troubled her, she was in no way discomposed, saying that she could always retire into the closet of her heart and seek consolation with her heavenly spouse. And she afterwards recommended her spiritual children to do the same. From time to time, then, gather your spirit into the solitude of your heart, where, separate from all men, you can lay open your soul and speak face to face with God and say with David, I have become like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like a night raven in the house. I have watched and have become as a sparrow all alone on the housetop. And these words we find beyond their literal meaning when we gather that the pious king devoted a part of his time to solitude and spiritual to contemplation, the description of three excellent kinds of retreat, as it were, three hermitages, where in our solitude we can imitate our Savior, who on Mount Calvary resembled the pelican of the wilderness. 
which revives its dying young ones with its own blood. By his birth in a desolate stable, he was like the lonely owl bemoaning our sins, and in his ascension he resembled the sparrow flying up to heaven, which may be called the roof of the earth. Amidst the worry and vexations of the world, then, we may seek a retreat in any of these resting places. When the blessed Isaiah, Count of Arian in Provence, had been long absent from his pious and chaste Delphine, she sent a messenger to bring her news concerning his health, by whom he replied, I am well, dear wife, and if you would see me, seek for me in the wounded side of our sweet Jesus, for there I dwell, and there will you find me. In vain do you seek elsewhere. Truly, he was a Christian knight. And I have a prayer card here of St. Padre Pio. And I use this as my bookmark. And St. Padre Pio said something similar. He would tell his spiritual children if they want to find him, they just need to go to the tabernacle and to our Eucharistic Jesus and there and there you can find me, he said. <laughs> so we are all connected in the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're never far apart when we are um, in the state of grace, when we enter prayer, when we are deeply united in the life of the Most Holy Trinity, then we are truly not far apart and we can find each other in the mystical body of Christ. And in a very special way through the sacraments, we can be connected in the Holy Eucharist and also through the Holy Rosary. The Holy Rosary has a beautiful way of connecting us in prayer. May we all have this grace to find joy and comfort in Jesus, uh, to always turn to him in our needs and not to seek anywhere else. We can't put our trust in ourselves and we certainly can't put our trust in mere people, but we should put all of our trust in Jesus. God bless you.